racing this weekend. It's Friday. I'm off Fridays. Uh, getting ready to load it up. I got the trailer mostly packed up. You know, the cooler, sleeping arrangements, all that stuff. Bike is, uh, I think, ready to go. Changed oil a bunch of times. I just keep, you know, just running stuff through it, kind of beating on it while it's on the lift. You know, I'll let it get hot, cool it down, heat it up. A couple two-step tests and just keep checking stuff. Last night I finally, um, sorry, I got the garage door open and it's only like 45 degrees out right now. But that's why my hood is up. Uh, last night I finally updated the uh, ECU. So updated the newest you know version software that they got. Uh, no big changes I saw for anything that what I'm utilizing. A couple features I want to try playing with, but we'll worry about that later. Uh, I, I had updated the laptop a couple weeks back, and uh, last night was the first time I had a chance to just uh, to get out here and hook up to the bike and take some data logs and just to check some stuff over. So that was the time that I updated, you know, the ECU. But for now, I'm going to uh, get this thing loaded up. One thing I got to do quick before uh, we throw in the trailer, though. So. saw me out the driveway playing around breaking in a tire getting the uh, prep off the thing or I should say conditioner off the thing uh, you notice the bike is backed up on the lift and the paint cover is not on it right now <laughs> this shit it never ends um so while I did that little uh burn in, burn out in the driveway uh while I was rolling it out to the end of the driveway I got a low fuel pressure warning and I looked down at the dash and it had 20 pounds pressure for fuel pressure I had noticed, if you listen to the video at the very, or that little clip, the very beginning when I've got the bike fired up and I'm giving it some revs, you can hear the fuel pump. This has got a loud fuel pump on it to start with. It's been extra growly loud lately. And it's one of those things where, like, you question what you're hearing. Like, is is that really different? Like, am I hearing it or what, what's going on? Well, part of why I wanted to do that burnout in the driveway was because, one, I wanted to make sure it would come up in, in burnout mode, go up on the two-step Everything worked before I got to the water box tomorrow and figured out there's a problem. I haven't been able to test it all, and it's just now stopped raining since for the last week it's been wet out. So I haven't been to the local track, and you saw that I just got this thing fired up like whatever a week ago. So that's kind of why I wanted to do that burnout anyways. Normally I wouldn't do that in uh, my driveway. but <laughs> um, So yeah, I, I, I there's two fuel filters on the bike. There's a sock down on the pump in the tank, and then there's an inline that I run. And... I figured something had to be up. That fuel pump, that's a fuel lab pump. It's a fucking badass pump. And I just had that thing sent out last year and gave it a clean bill of health because I was chasing a fuel push, fuel issue previously. Um, whole nother thing. You watch some of the old videos that he may complain about that. But we got it sorted out and the thing had been running good. But uh, the fuel pump, I was just thinking about it. I'm like, there's really, there's not much in that that can fail short of it like electrically failing. So I'm like, there's something else going on here because it would have, you know, I'd changed, I'd changed the fuel pressure to like 45 pounds at idle. The next time I'd start the bike, it had 40. And then I was doing the burnout, it was 42. And then when I got partway down the driveway, it was 20. So like some, something erratically was going on. I'm like, fuck it. I'm putting it back on the lift before I put it in the trailer. And uh, we got to figure this out. I'm not taking it to the race, you know, three and a half hours away with inconsistent fuel pressure. Well, this is the sock that goes on the end of that pump in the tank. And I'm going to try to flip the camera around here and put this thing up to the light and show you what's going on. Let's see. All right, you still with me? So look into the light. There, see, look at that. <laughs> see how you can just kind of see through parts of the filter? So what's going on here is... This is an aluminum sock filter, and the reason I know it's aluminum 
is because I cut the corner off with a pair of scissors. If this was stainless, it wouldn't cut with scissors. And it's all like I can, I can bend this and fold it and do whatever. Like it's an aluminum sock filter and it's plugged up. My only guess of what's going on here is this is part of what I was chasing uh, before last year when the inside of that fuel tank was starting to kind of oxidize and I was getting a white powdery deal going on in the tank and it was ended up in the injectors and it was causing havoc on the system. Well, I've since coated the inside of that tank. It's got PTFE fuel lines on it now, so there's no rubber to deteriorate. Uh, the fuel rail itself is raw aluminum, but for whatever reason, the inside of that has not done this, that gotten kind of corroded and powdery. But I believe the methanol, and this thing sits, like before I parked this for the winter, I run it on race gas, regular race gas, and then race gas goes in the tank, it gets circulated, and even when the bike is sitting with no motor in it, I have the fuel lines connected. I still circulate fuel to keep fuel moving in there and then keep the pump and everything kind of wet. But uh, best I can tell is the methanol over the two three years I've been running this is uh, actually corroding the aluminum on this and turning it to this white. Like, I'll see if I can show you like what's on my fingers here. There, see, it's like, it's the aluminum's like oxidizing and it's plugging up the filter. So the other filter I got on here, this guy, this actually has a stainless element in it. And I'd have to look, I'm not going to, I don't, I don't remember what micron it is. It's been so long since I've had to work on the bike stuff. <laughs> uh, I sound like an idiot in my own shit. And I don't know what it is, but yeah, I just don't remember what micron it is. I got fairly small, but it's still got to be high flow. So you can only restrict so small before it starts affecting the flow to the rest of the bike. But that is a stainless element. So we're going to leave the sock off of this thing. And then, yeah, we're going to leave the sock off. And I'm just going to rely on that one filter. Now I don't have to pull the pump out to service anything. And there's technically nothing really in that pump that would be affected by like little small bits of junk, whatever. Um, the pump should flow that right out of the system. That filter should catch it. So now I'll just keep an eye on the screen in that thing I can service it every couple runs if I want but that's where we're at now I need to reset fuel pressure I'll probably go do another burnout outside quick just to uh I just tripped on something down there um I'll probably go do another burnout in the driveway just to monitor some stuff take a quick data log of it and then uh yeah we'll go from there also one thing is so the end of last year when I burnt those cases and I had that little torch job happen, uh, I'm questioning things now because that was the last time I ran the bike, right? It was the last time I was at the track was when I wrecked the motor, which means it came here, got tore down. I put pump gas in that cell, circulated it, everything. All that corrosion didn't happen over winter, happened over winter with just 110, I said pump gas, but it comes out of a pump. Um, all that corrosion didn't happen over winter with just race gas in that tank. I'm starting to wonder if last end of last year, uh, maybe I didn't look at the data logs for fuel pressure that close. I truly don't remember. I usually watch that stuff. But when it uh, nipped that cylinder, I wonder if it was a fuel problem. Maybe it wasn't a previously existing crack in that cylinder or something like that. Maybe, uh, maybe it was a fuel delivery deal I should I I don't have the data log from that pass I did until I started updating stuff and kind of cleaning the laptop out and making sure everything was fresh for this year but yeah kind of yeah I'm just kind of wondering about some stuff now and you know it's kind of all water under the bridge at this point what's happened has happened but uh I'll be the first to admit maybe I've been lacking on the uh general maintenance on some things and I know when I coated the inside of that fuel cell, the uh, the sock was clean when I put it all back together. So that corrosion, it must have just kind of happened throughout last season. I don't really drain the, the fuel cell of methanol during the season because I, I come out here all the time. I'm always working on the bike, playing with the two, and I'm always running it on methanol. But maybe just that sock being aluminum and just having contact with methanol all year, um, 
maybe that kind of, you know, caused an issue. So hopefully we got the last of the failure points out of this freaking fuel system. Uh, the fuel has been relatively, like, I love running methanol, but I'm finding little by little things, you know. So now we double check some stuff and put it back in the trailer. This is why I just can't bring myself to wrap this thing or paint it different. It just looks freaking good. Like I get ideas for things I want to try or change it up somehow. And then I see it out in the sun and it's like, it's just everything I always wanted, you know? Let's see if I can show you some of the sparkle. She just shines. Looks really good at night under like racetrack lights. But uh, yeah, I need to street ride this a little more. All right, so uh, quick little video before we go racing. This uh, originally I had planned on this being, you know, load up, go racing, all one video. But after having the uh, fuel pump issue, I figured I would just uh, I just ended that ended at that. So I'm gonna get loaded up, and then uh, we'll see how the uh, the trip down goes. I'll film a little bit, get to the track tonight. I don't think I'm gonna do any testing tonight. Uh, with my luck, I just want to make it to first round tomorrow. So. Uh, I have a pretty good record of, well, last year I started out wrecking a motor before the race even started, like two or three different times. Well, that was an oil thing. Eh. 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 What do you do? But, uh, I'm going to say but, uh, 75 more times, I swear to God. Anyway, I'm going to load up and I'm going to get some lunch and then we'll be on the road shortly. Uh, next video I post, hopefully will be some, uh, good, good racing luck. I'm going to go for some good racing luck. Uh, honestly, I just want to make a full pass. I want to make a full pass. I want to come back, put this thing in the garage. I want to change the oil. And I want everything to look good. And then go from there.